Lake City. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we are having three meetings tonight. Uh, meeting as the local building authority of Salt Lake City, as the RDA board, and then finally our formal meeting as the city council. Um, welcome to today's meeting. We're happy to have you join us, whether you're in person, on Zoom, or watching from uh, one of our other live feeds. Um, as we begin tonight's formal meeting, we have a bit of a different agenda, um, which is uh, what I just described, that we're gonna be meeting in our three different roles as the council. Um, before we do that, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Uh, thank you again for everyone who's joining us. Uh, before we move through the agenda, I want to remind everyone about our rules of decorum, which are in place to ensure our meetings move along well and to help everyone feel comfortable in sharing their comments. A copy of the rules of decorum are available at the do door and our staff will post uh, the link to those rules in uh, Zoom. As the local building authority, um, we are at potential action item B1 regarding a resolution for the budget of the capital projects fund of the local building authority for fiscal year 2023 to 2024. I look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the board adopt the resolution adopting the final budget for the capital projects funds of the local building authority of Salt Lake City for fi the fiscal year 2023-24. Second. I have a motion from Council Member du or Board Member Dugan and a second from Board Member Pui. Um, is there any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we will go ahead and vote on it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right, that is unanimous. Um, I didn't hear Council Member. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, then that is unanimous. Um, okay. That concludes um, our meeting as the local building authority. I will ask for a motion to adjourn as the local building authority and convene as the redevelopment agency board. I move that we adjourn as a local building authority and readjourn as the RDA board. I have a motion from board member Dugan and a second from board member Valdemoros. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Okay, we are now convened as the Redevelopment Agency of Salt Lake City Board of Directors. Um, we are at RDA Potential Action uh, Item D1, which is regarding a resolution for the budget of the Redevelopment Agency of Salt Lake City for fiscal year 2023 to 2024. I'll look for a motion. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move that the board adopt a resolution approving the fiscal year 2024 RDA budget reflected in the attached key changes spreadsheet. Second. I have a motion from um, board member Pui and a second from board member Dugan. Um, is there any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Um, now, I will look for, uh, oh, sorry, this concludes our business um, as the RDA board. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn and reconvene as the Salt Lake City Council. So moved. Second. Pickham. I have a motion from board member Mono, a second from count, uh, board member Pui. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Okay. That passes unanimously. We are now convened as the body of the Salt Lake City Council. Our first item of council business is F1. Uh, we will approve the work session meeting minutes of July 3rd, 2023, February 21st, 2023, March 7th, 2023, March 14th, 2023, March 21st, 2023, April 11th, 2023, and April 18th, 2023, as well as the formal meeting minutes of March 7th, 2023, March 21st, 2023, and April 11th, 2023. I'll look for a motion. And Mr. Chair, I just want to make one correction. It's January 3rd, 2023. 
What did I say? June or July. Oh, I meant January. Thank you. Uh, so moved. Second. All right. I have a, a, a motion from Council Member Dugan, a second from Council Member Puy. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right. That passes unanimously. Um, the next item on our agenda is item F2 which is to consider adopting a joint ceremonial resolution with Mayor Mendenhall recognizing June 19th, 2023 as Juneteenth Freedom Day in Salt Lake City. And I'm happy to read that motion. <clears throat> Whereas President Abraham Lincoln first issued the Emancipation Proclamation effective January 1st, 1863, decreeing all people held as slaves be henceforth or henceforward free. However, a portion of Southern enslavers ignored that order, and whereas Union General Gordon Granger was dispatched to Galveston, Texas to announce the surrender of Confederate General Robert E. Lee, and on June 19, 1865, enforced the President's 1863 order, General Order No. 3, freeing stolen Africans and some indigenous people still held in human bondage in the state of Texas, two and a half years after it was first decreed, and whereas General Granger and his troops were joined by five to 10,000 additional soldiers from the 28th Indiana, 29th Illinois, and combined New York um, and 31st regiments of the U.S. Colored Troops, USCT, that dropped anchor on June 18th in Galveston Bay and provided a powerful image of the island's enslaved people, and whereas, in 1865, President Lincoln said, without the military help um, of the black freed men, the war against the South could not have been won. And whereas June 19th has since come to be known as Juneteenth and is one of the oldest celebrations in America, growing out of the experiences of now black Americans and their enslaved African ancestors, and is a celebration of the ending of chattel slavery in America with the first official Juneteenth celebration taking place in Texas in 1866, and whereas Juneteenth provides an opportunity for the city to celebrate black American heritage and honor the lives, sacrifices, and contributions that are woven into the American fabric, and whereas Juneteenth also acknowledges America's commitment to liberty and equality in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, along with the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th Amendment of the, to the Constitution, which abolished slavery, ratified by Congress on December 6, 1865. And whereas, through other, system, other systems of oppression, such as sharecropping, Jim Crow, redlining, prison industrial complex, black maternal health disparities, the plunder of black bodies and black wealth, continued past slavery and persisted to this day, disproportionately affecting the physical and mental well-being, safety, and education of black Americans. And whereas the candid acknowledgement of this history is necessary if we as a nation, state, or city are successful in our effort to build a truly equitable community that exemplifies and promotes the fundamental American values of freedom, diversity, equality, liberty, and justice. And whereas both the federal government and the state of Utah now recognize Juneteenth on the third, third Saturday in June as an official holiday. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Salt Lake City Council and Mayor of Salt Lake City recognize June 19, 2023 as Juneteenth Freedom Day in Salt Lake City in celebration of the culturally important role of emancipation and the work towards that liberation in our past, present, and future. Be it further resolved that Salt Lake City emphasizes the freedom and dignity of every human being and opposes and rejects any form of oppression. I will look for a motion. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion from uh, Council Member Petro and a second from Council Member Dugan. Um, is there any discussion to this? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All aye. opposed say nay. Uh, that passes unanimously. Um, we have joining us today uh, Betty Sawyer, Executive Director of Project Success Coalition and Ogden NAACP President, as well as Representative Sandra Hollins from the Utah State Legislature. Thank you to both of you for being here. Would either of you like to take a moment to speak to the resolution? 
if you would go ahead and come up to this front table here and um, you're welcome to have a seat and just speak directly into the microphone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. First and foremost, I'm glad you had to read the resolution and not me. <laughs> it was a little lengthy, but definitely important. Uh, as a part of uh, Project Success Coalition and our 34-year history in providing the Juneteenth celebrations here in the state of Utah, we're excited to join you this evening. We're excited about the leadership that has been taken by the mayor and council and the staff to make Juneteenth prominent in Salt Lake City. Uh, you've been with us since we started the celebrations, probably about 10 years ago at least, and so we're glad to still be here and to just reaffirm that commitment that we have to liberty, to justice, to equity, and do the necessary work because uh, we look forward to the celebration, but then after the holiday, we get back to work on those real issues that impact lives every day. And I know with your help, we're gonna make significant difference in a positive manner in our city and in our state. And again, thank you for your leadership and your commitment in doing this work. Would you like to get a picture? With you? <laughs> sure. you? My friend, of course. And, and I'm gonna ask Representative Hollins to come up with me because Without her leadership and support, we wouldn't have the holiday. Wherever you tell me. That was super smooth. Are they close to you? Yeah. Just a buck and a half. Oh. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. This brings us to the council public hearings portion of our meeting. If you would like to comment on a public hearing that's set for today, we're accepting comments in person and online um, via Zoom. If you need to speak with our staff, please select uh, Isaac Canedo from uh, the list of participants. If you need to, you can also raise your hand in the Zoom to indicate that you need something from the host. Taylor Hill from our staff will be calling those who wish to comment based on the order that we receive the names. So if you're on Zoom, please unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. Item G1 is regarding a resolution for the issuance of airport revenue bonds series 2023 for financing the construction of the new Salt Lake City International Airport. Before we begin taking comments, I will turn the time over to Sam Owen from the City Council staff to give us a short introduction. Sam. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The airport proposes the issue up to $600 million in general airport revenue bonds. The total issuance amount is likely to be close to $450 million. The funds would be used to continue the airport's massive multi-year rebuild and new construction. The bonds are backed by airport revenue. No tax dollars are used to pay airport debt or to pay for its capital improvements. Thank you. Thank you. Taylor, would you start with our first public comment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. There is no one registered for this item. Okay. Mr. Uh, yes. I move that the council close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Dugan and a second from Council Member Pui. I'll, uh, any discussion to this motion? 
Seeing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, um, that passes unanimously. That brings us to potential action item H1 regarding. Mr. Chair, oh, yes. I apologize if I may interrupt just a little bit. Yes. Go ahead, Councilmember Fowler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I know that we are on the potential action item. I'm wondering if I can take just a brief moment of personal privilege before we get started. Um, yes, go ahead. Um, I just wanted, as we are about to embark on uh, voting for our budget, and I wanted to mention that this is my last council meeting. And what an epic council meeting to be voting on yet another amazing Salt Lake City budget. So if it's all right with the chair, I'll just take a couple of minutes because I'd like to do this now before we get started that um, this is my sixth budget in voting for, and you can cut me off and I can do it later if need be. Um, that's why I'm asking permission now. Go right ahead. Thank you. Um, I just wanna say how amazing this process always is and that I'm grateful for the last six years of being a part of this budget process. Over my time here as a city council member, we have done so much amazing work from the MRT programs and alternative response models that continue to get funded. It's one of the things I pushed for from day one to uh, and to see where it's grown and where it is now and what we're doing with this budget is truly amazing. Making sure that our city is accessible and safe to everyone. Uh, to streamlining the processes and creating foundations of our values and mission, missions, again, creating access for everyone. I think that this budget certainly shows that that is a priority for all of us. I'm so proud of my time as the RDA chair over the years. Affordable housing has always been my top priority. And while I was chairperson over the years, we spent over $40 million in affordable housing and we continue to make that number grow. Unbelievable. And of course, Access to everyone is something that has been a priority of mine and I know of this council and of all of our councils. One of my greatest things is making sure that we have free menstrual hygiene products throughout our city buildings, including, and I believe, still the first airport in the country to ever offer such access. I just wanna take a moment to say thank you. I couldn't have done any of these things alone want to say thank you to my mentors, uh, particularly James and Charlie, who taught me how to be a council person, uh, to taught me to fight for myself, my voice, and have been there through thick and thin. Of course, to the administrative staff, wow, um, both with the administration and of every department director that we have in this city. As we go forward in adopting this budget, it has been said throughout the meetings how important our directors and their employees are. I truly believe, and I've said this over and over again, that if that there is no city that has the directors or the employees that care about their city as much as we do. And you see that in every presentation that we have seen throughout this budget process. It has been unbelievable over the last six years to, con to be able to see that through all of our directors. From Chief Lieb telling me, Amy, the MRT isn't ready yet. Let's wait for the numbers. To Mary Beth and Laura Briefer making sure that our city is running safely and securely. All of our directors, Katie, I could name every single one of them. My time as the chairperson getting to know each and every one of you on a personal level was a blessing that I cannot ever put into words. So thank you for your dedication to this city. Of course, as always to our city council staff, none of this would be possible without you. We have ride or dies in the city council staff. And I wanna thank particularly Cindy Gus Jensen, Jen Bruno and Lehua Weaver for 
truly being my writer dies. And my true friends and family who have stuck by me inside and outside of this council. I am so very grateful to be at this point. I have worked hard. My constituents, I have done everything for you. I believe in all of the work that we have done and all of the work that I have done. It's a bittersweet moment having this be my last council meeting. To the rest of you, best of luck. And I leave you with this. Don't forget to feed the unicorns. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Fowler, and, and thanks for your service to Salt Lake City and to the residents of District 7. Um, and um, we wish you, I think, I speak for all of us when we wish you the very best. And it was, uh, it was good to, to work with you on the council. So thank you for your work. Thank you, Amy. We'll miss you. Okay. Um, so we are back to the agenda. Um, we are on um, item H1, which is an ordinance regarding um, Salt Lake City School District signs. Um, do we have a s staff member speaking about this? I think we just vote. Or are we just voting? Motion. Just okay. Vote. Mr. Right. Chair. Yes, go ahead. I move that the council adopt the ordinance. Second. Thank you. I have a motion from Councilmember Dugan, a second from Councilmember Mono. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, that passes unanimously. Um, next, we are on item H2 regarding a resolution for Cannon Greens Community Garden at 1300 South and 800 West, public benefits analysis. Um, and authoring the lease rate and terms. I'll look for a motion. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move that the council authorize be below market rent for lease of property located at 1300 South and 800 West for urban farming programs. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Poy, a second from Councilmember Dugan. Is there any discussion to this? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Um, next, we are on item H3 regarding an ordinance for the new five-year housing plan, Housing SLC. I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt the Housing SLC five-year moderate income housing plan. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Dugan, a second from Council Member Pui. Um, is there any discussion to this item? Yes, Chair. Yes. I just want to clarify, since we had so many comments from the public about the lack of attention to affordable and deeply affordable in this plan, that this is a state-required plan for housing that specifically address, addresses what we're going to do about moderate housing. The specificity of that income level is intentional and conforms with state guidance. We are actively engaged in other levels, which you will see through the anti-displacement um, plan coming forward through Thriving in Place. Yes. Thank you, Councilmember um, Petro, for reminding us um, and reminding the public about that. Um, any other discussion? Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Seeing none, uh, or I'm sorry, that's unanimous, um, seven to zero, and we will go to items H4 to H17, which are associated with the implementation of the mayor's recommended budget for Salt Lake City, including the library fund for the fiscal year 2023-2024. The council has truly appreciated the public's interest, feedback, and involvement in this fiscal year's budget discussions. Input from the public is always invaluable in helping the council to decide how to balance this fiscal year's budget. Council members, please refer to the motion sheet prepared by staff as you make your motions. Thank you. And I'll look for those Ms. now. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt an ordinance approving the budget for the library fund of Salt Lake City for fiscal year 2023-24. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Dugan, a second from Councilmember Mono. Any discussion to this? 
Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All uh, right, that passes unanimously. Um, well, let me just... Uh, okay, here we go. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. I move that the council adopt an ordinance approving Salt Lake City's fiscal year 2023 through 24 budget as outlined in the attached key changes spreadsheet and staffing document, excluding the schedule for capital projects and debt and the library fund, including the contingent appropriations as listed on the motion sheet under motion number two, items A through D. Second. I have a motion from council member Fowler, a second from council member Puy. Is there any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Chair, oh. I don't think I was the one that gave that motion, but I think you said Fowler. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I? Okay, council member Fowler, thank you. Um, the motion was from council member Mono, and the second from council member Puy. Thank you for the correction. Um, all in favor, or any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, that passes unanimously. Mr. Chair. Yes. I move that the council adopt an ordinance setting the final tax, final rate of tax levy, including the final levy for the library fund upon all real and personal property within Salt Lake City, made taxable by law for fiscal year 2023-24, as listed on the motion sheet, and authorize the council chair to sign the necessary documentation for the state tax commission, a tax of 0 .003599 on each dollar of taxable valuation of which 0 .002456 shall be credit, credited as revenue in the general fund generating $100,530,046 of ongoing revenue and point zero 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 three seven shall be credited to the judgment levy for the general fund a one-year adjustment generating one million four hundred ninety eight thousand nine hundred thirty five dollars of one-time revenue and point zero 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 five eight zero shall be credited as revenue in the special library fund generating $24,916,220 of ongoing revenue and 0 .000424 shall be credited toward repayment of general obligation bonds generating $17,342,055 of ongoing revenue and 0 .000007 shall be credited to the judgment levy for the library fund, a one-year adjustment generating $293,207 of one-time revenue and 0 .000095 shall be credited as revenue in the special government immunity fund for tort liability generating $3,888,581 of ongoing revenue. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Dugan, a second from Council Member Mono. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. Any other motions? Mr. Chair? Yes. I move that the council adopt thirty-nine million seven hundred and fifty-nine thousand two hundred and sixty-seven to be dollars to be transferred into CIP, including approving eleven million seven hundred and one five hundred and twenty-six seven hundred and one thousand five hundred and twenty-six in funding as shown on the motion sheet. Later this year, the council will consider CIP project-specific allocations. Second. I have a, a motion from Council Member Pui, a second from Council Member Valdemoros. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. The Chair? Yes. I move that the Council adopt the legislative intent statements as outlined on the motion sheet under motion five, 
items A through I. Thank you. Second. Thank you. I have a motion from Councilmember Valdemoros, a second from Councilmember Petro. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, we will proceed to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Say nay. See, all right, that passes unanimously, seven to zero. Um, I feel like we maybe could do one more motion. Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. let's do one Mr. more. Chair. <laughs> yes, go ahead. I move that the council adopt ordinances A through J as shown on the motion sheet relating to the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget. Second. I have a motion from council member Pui, a second from council member Dugan. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. That passes unanimously. All right, yeah, that felt good. Six, I think, was the right amount. Um, <laughs> yay. Yes. All right. That brings us to the general comments portion of the agenda. Um, first, I'll ask if the council has any questions for the mayor. Um, yes, go ahead, Councilmember Petro. I'd like to thank the mayor and her administration for sending us just a really well thought out budget. I'd also like to curse you because it almost makes our job harder when it's so well thought out and during those moments where we weren't sure new growth was going to keep up or the other numbers weren't going to come up and we were looking for where, if anywhere, we could save a penny. I appreciate that you've given us a budget that prioritizes the needs of our constituents and gives us the flexibility to do the policy things that we believe are important to keep our city moving forward in a healthy direction. And I appreciate that you answer just one more question, even when you don't feel like you should have to. Um, I don't apologize for asking them, but I do apologize for the gray hairs I give you when I do ask them. Um, but thank you. It's this. I found this budget to be even more difficult than last year's. Um, but it was a real privilege to be able to work with you and to prioritize the things that we know our constituents need. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I, I want to add my voice to Councilmember Petro's about the collaboration with the Mayor's Office and particularly with helping us find and sort through and organize funding for affordable housing. This year we have done more than I can ever remember doing and they are projects spread throughout the city at different income levels and different types of projects and I think we are moving the needle faster than I've ever seen it move and that's thanks to your collaboration with us and I appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. And I wanted to thank the administration as well and also you guys for, for supporting the ADU million dollars that we wanted to do for, in, for incentivizing those and also the naturally occurring affordable housing as well. And thanks to the mayor for being, being able to talk about it and, and saying yes to that and to the staff that will take care of this, which is what uh, Councilmember Mano was talking about, diversifying the way we do affordable housing in the city and, and also for the contingency on the, on the, um, on the um, sanction campaign funds to to you know to look into it a little bit closer than what we had before so thank you mr chair i would like to thank our council staff uh because i uh, I, I, I said it earlier today uh it's uh the incredible talent that the council staff uh that you know the cindy has uh led uh is is just mind-blowing uh and the amount of uh, commitment, the many hours of work that the council staff put together to make everything happen and to answer the random questions that we have. Uh, certainly the crazy stuff I send all of you, I appreciate you so much uh, to make it happen. Obviously, uh, you know, I'm new at this and I uh, will have not been able to accomplish anything if it wasn't for all of you, so thank you. Councilmember Dugan, anyone I, you'd like to thank? I want to thank everybody just like uh, my council members did. I appreciate all the work and the team, uh, team effort this, uh, that took place this past six years in four months or th four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank you to the mayor staff for being here. And I know that um, the mayor really wanted to be here for this meeting, but wasn't able to because of another commitment. But um, 
um, echo the thanks that have already been shared to um, your side of the council building and to our own side. So thank you. Um, okay. Um, we are now to the general comment portion of our agenda. As a reminder for those joining in the Zoom, Isaac Canedo from our staff will moderate our Zoom and will message you with any questions about your registration. Staff is handling many tasks, so please limit messages to technical issues and minimal information updates. If you do need to speak with our staff, please select Isaac, spelled I-S-A-A-C, Canedo, from the list of participants if you need to. Uh, you may also raise your hand in the Zoom to indicate that you need something from the host. Taylor Hill from our staff will be calling the names of those who wish to comment based on the order of your registration and the uh, received comment cards. If you're on Zoom, please unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. At the two minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will be muted. If you're unable to finish your comment, please send the rest of your comment via email um, or mail or call our office. Taylor, you can begin with our first general comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have 23 people registered for general comment. The first will be Sicardi Zufelt, followed by Paige Hupp, and then Janine Locke. Sicardi, you may now unmute. Hello, council members. Um, yeah, my name is Zachary D. Zufelt. I just wanted to make comments, particularly about the need for sanctioned campgrounds and the need for um, more um, public utilities being available throughout the downtown area and garbage cans being readily available in the downtown area as to prevent uh, public waste being an issue and and um, making the unsheltered look bad when they want to be as clean as anyone else. Um, it's been a major problem with the abatements that happen um, for those who are unable to get into the shelters, there's a dramatic bed, bed so shortage and it's just simply unrealistic for people to be able to make it into those shelters. So having a safe place for people to go where they can have their, you know, their personal items monitored while they're out filling out applications and, you know, if they're able to work, go out and look for work and not have their items be at risk of being stolen. So I just wanted to, you know, emphasize that point that it is, it is needed that we have a safe place to be able to build our lives in between um, different stages of housing while we're applying for housing and other such things. Okay, thank you. And next will be Paige Huff, followed by Janine Locke, and then Jessica Lyman. Paige, you may now unmute. Yes, thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Paige Huff, and tonight I am joining as a voluntary board member for Unsheltered Utah. Um, I do want to be clear that I am here in support of Unsheltered Utah, not in affiliation with any other organizations that I am part of. But I wanted to speak in, in regards to the sanctioned campgrounds as well. I think that Unsheltered Utah has done an amazing job at setting forth the blueprint to be able to assist in this process as far as bringing me on board as a board member, as a licensed LCSW, to ensure that all staff that that are employed by this organization are able to obtain the correct accreditations and certifications in order to be licensed by the state of Utah. I also feel like this organization has demonstrated through its work with the Second and Second Coalition that they are able to handle a new innovative way to working with our unsheltered relatives. And I just wanted to join here in support and recommend that you take their approach in allowing them to partner in this new sanctioned campground. Thank you. 
And next will be Janine Luck, followed by Jessica Lyman, and then Jay Larson. Janine is here in person. <clears throat> okay. Hi, I'm Janine Locke, and um, I do not currently reside here in Salt Lake City, but I really love this city. Um, I'm a retired library employee with Salt Lake City Public Library System and worked at the Day Riverside um, Library. And um, I have a really special place in my heart for Rose Park and just for all of the library employees um, of this city. Um, a lot of the general public doesn't probably doesn't know just like what heroes we have among us and um, their desks or their um, the work that they do is done in the public libraries all throughout the state of Utah and throughout the world. Um, and I, I I just wanted to comment to um, I'm thankful for the budget that were passed and that they were included, the library budgets and the funding. Um, I, I really want this city to keep supporting the work that the libraries are doing. It's um, so necessary. There are people of humans of Salt Lake City of all ages that are being served and actually all throughout the county um, and beyond because people come and visit the library that are just kind of visiting the library to, for the architecture and to see what a neat place it is and interact with the librarians there. Um, speaking of Rose Park and the Day Riverside Library, um, it's my hope that, um, that the administration um, and that the city council will continue to support um, the work that's being done there, because if you look at the data, um, there, that particular library is Time. serving so many. <laughs> oh, time's up. Okay, so please keep considering the Dave Riverside Library. Thanks. Thank Next you. is Jessica Lyman. Members of Salt Lake City, um, can you hear me all right? Hi, my name is Jessica Lyman. Um, I'm super excited to get to have a comment. I've been trying to get for a while. I am a volunteer with the Nomad Alliance, and I am really excited about the funds that have been allocated for the sanctions camps. I would really like to comment on how, how important it is to me as a citizen of Salt Lake as a voter, as a constituent, as someone trying to be involved, I really appreciate the effort that is put into prioritizing the safety and accessibility of resources to our homeless people. A little bit of detail, I, um, my dad, dad was Army, I was a military spouse for nine years, I was divorced in 2020, and my mental health was completely annihilated. I became homeless, I have four children, I spent the winter of 2021 living in a camper. If I had not had a place where I could park that camper, just a place to park it, where I could sit long enough to go to work every day and not be afraid of my resources, my meager resources, being stolen from me. If I did not have that, I would not be where I am today. Today, in 2021, I was making $15 an hour as a security officer. I have been with security for three years, and now I'm making 21. The capacity to grow comes from a place of security. Without safety, we cannot thrive. The wealth of our city, I believe, is not determined by the height of our buildings, nor the pocketbooks of whoever is funding these projects. I'm hearing massive numbers being thrown at the airport, at city signs, at things that are important, absolutely. But only 500,000 has been allocated for this project. In 2021, Time. 
to wrap it up, I read about tiny homes that were approved and are still not here. This needs to be a priority and I appreciate the effort that is being put into it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next will be Jay Larson, followed by Daniel Taylor and then Wendy Garvin. Jay is here in person. Thank, thank you. Just a reminder um, before you begin, sir, just um, I understand that the urge to want to um, express your support for different commenters, but one of our rules is that um, we don't like clap or cheer after people comment so that each person feels free to make it and uh, like it's a safe place for them to make a comment maybe if they don't agree. So if you'll please keep that rule in mind as we go forward. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, boy, that brings up a question, but I don't question about why we clapped earlier. But anyway, I got more important things to do. Um, so I, I, first of all, I want to say, um, it seems like every time I have to come here, I want to explain our flag and all flags of every country represent divisions between us. I prefer to pledge allegiance to all humanity and inclusiveness. That being said, let me get on to my main message. I'm here to, uh, my name is Jay Larson, I live in Salt Lake City, and I'm a veteran Friend of Veterans for Peace, Chapter 35 in Spokane, Washington. On November 7th, 2022, the Spokane City Council passed an ordinance that made Spokane City nuclear free and prevents people in Spokane City limits from doing business with nuclear weapon industry. However, the ordinance does allow for some to apply for a waiver. That ordinance became official December 21st 2022. Uh, Spokane City Council President Brian Biggs wrote the ordinance and it has passed legal muster. Um, Brian Biggs is a lawyer and was just appointed by uh, Governor Inslee to be a Spokane uh, County Superior Court. Um, we are hoping to share copies of this ordinance with any other cities or entities, uh, whether here or abroad, interested in similar goals. Our hope is if enough of us pass similar legislation, it will send a strong message to our federal and state governments that we demand action in an effort to rid our world of nuclear weapons. Uh, my friend Tom Charles is a member of Veterans for Peace, Chapter 35 in Spokane, was a significant participant in getting the ordinance passed. I've included a copy of the ordinance. Time. Anyway, each of you should have a copy. Um, I hope you'll consider that. Thank you, Thank you sir. We've re received that. Um, next commenter. Next will be Daniel Taylor, followed by Wendy Garvin, and then Amanda DeBoard. Daniel is here in person. Um, I, I want to preface my 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 comment. Um, I'm I'm going for the. Uh, the sanction campground as well. Um, as an individual who who was addicted um, I, I've seen the in and outs of, of the uh, you know the indeficiencies of, of, of the system and uh, I apologize. Right. Go ahead. Um, uh, as an individual who who was an addict you know, I've I've seen I've seen all of the chinks in in the system's armor, and uh, a huge part of that had to was was because of of constantly being being pushed around and and losing losing personal inventory and, and property um, to to abatements to to being being in places where you weren't allowed um, and 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 going to jail over and over again, you know, uh, a sanctioned campground would, would nullify those issues. It would allow uh, a greater co-op efficiency in which individuals were gathered to be able to receive resources and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, from, from multiple divisions um, as well. Um, it would it would allow greater security and state of mind and 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 an opportunity to to be able to have have a base to to you know make an actual start. Um, working with uh, the Nomad Alliance, 
Um, you know, they, they served me resources for, for several years um, before uh, I was able to, to get into recovery and, and be able to change that mindset um, for myself as an individual. And uh, I just uh, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh Next will be Wendy Garvin, followed by Amanda DeBoard, and then Matt Lindhart. Wendy is here in person. Hi, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. And this is going to be a first for me. I'm here to say thank you to all of you. <laughs> Um, I particularly would like to recognize Victoria and Ali, uh, uh, Council Member Petro and Council Member Pui, um, for the for the emotional fight I've seen you guys go through to get to this point where we can approve sanctioned camping funding, and we can start working on a plan. Um, I think we all know now the devil is in the details, and so I am committed to working with all of you to make sure that those we get those details right. I think you all remember that we ran um, an emergency overflow shelter over the winter, and we learned a lot. We learned a lot about security and safety. We grew up as an organization and got insurance, and we have a fully functional 501c3, and we uh, we learned how very, very hard this is and also how very, very worth it it is. So thank you so very much for putting this in the budget and uh, giving all of these great organizations like Food Justice Coalition and Our Unsheltered Relatives and Nomad Alliance and all of the other organizations that work out on the, the street coconut hut the opportunity to provide these services that we have been asking for for so long. Thank you so very much. Next will be Amanda DuBord, followed by Matt Lenhart, and then Jessica Sweden. Amanda's here in person. Hi, my name is Amanda DuBord. Um, I am here for the coalition with the um, campgrounds. Um, I was homeless not too long ago, and um, during the summer of 21, I had stayed in several different places along the Jordan River. Um, it was, it was really hard for us, for me, to get on my feet because I didn't have a safe place. Um, I had got all my things together and I was, I was working really hard when I met this lady here and she was feeding us and, um, sorry, and changed my life. Um, Although the police came through and they threw away everything I owned when I was at work. Um, it took me another seven to eight months to get off the streets. Meanwhile, there was murderers and rapists and it was, it was enlarged. And so like to have a place where we can have these people help us is what we need. And I mean, the budget, um, you know, I'm hoping that what we're here doing and what you guys are doing is going to actually help us and that we'll be able to get more funding because this is a huge problem here in Utah. Um, I know having camps everywhere around the city is just gross. And I understand, you know, being a part of that myself, it's embarrassing, but we need help. We don't have a place to be and it's hard. I'm a mother and I'm, I'm in recovery. And it took so much for me to get off the streets. And it, I just, I, I'd call in for beds and I couldn't get in. Um, and it was, it was hard. I've seen a lot of people out there struggling and there's just as many resources as there are, there isn't enough. And we need this. And so I just want to say thank you for everything you guys are doing for us. Um, it means the world to us. Um, and that's all I got, thank you. Next will be Matt Lenhart, followed by Jessica Sweden, and then Kim Elbrader. Matt is here in person. <clears throat> um, having been involved with the homeless for uh, a few years, um, my attempts to make a difference um, helped in some ways, but then also shed light on um, a lot of um, further needs that were necessary uh, to be filled. and. With my research and looking into um, further ways to make a difference, I came across uh, tiny home villages. 
which is a concept that's been around for over a decade. Um, in Texas, the largest program of tiny home villages is called Loaves and Fishes, which started out over a decade ago as just a bread truck helping provide meals. But, you know, a lot of these short-term solutions are really just Band-Aids um, to help, but it's a bigger problem than just that, and so a bigger solution is necessary. And Tiny Home Villages is a proven um, that model with a track record of success that, that turns lives around in just uh, a few months. And a lot of times, the, the drugs just fall away. They just, there's no need for them because of the, uh, the resources and, and uh, facilities that tiny home villages provide. Um, the camps um, that Ksenia is proposing um, and have been proposed, it definitely gets people out of the weather and um, <clears throat> gets four walls and a roof over someone, which is a huge help. It's the first step in making a difference. But it's, it's like um, in psychology, there's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which the basics are taken care of, but then there's other steps to having a life as, as a person, which um, tiny home villages provide, providing um, really the social socialization and the guidance and structure of a consistent day after day, week after week kind of environment. Um, kind of if you think of it as uh, sort of a staffed, a summer camp with staff. You know, security, laundry, medical Time. are provided. So Loaves and Fishes, Leahy in Seattle are some of the best programs. Thank you. Next will be Jessica Sweden, followed by Kem Albrader and then Allison Albrader. Jessica, you may now unmute. Good evening to everyone. Um, I am calling, sorry, from offsite, but I wanted to call and um, participate in this meeting because it's important to me and to a lot of us to recognize that this city is um, is taking a major step in advocating for and budgeting for sanctioned camps. Um, I've been a I've been a part of Unsheltered Utah. I've worked a lot with several outreach organizations, especially Second and Second Coalition, this last winter, um, operating our. <laughs> sorry, you caught me walking. Um, operating our overflow shelter at the Methodist Church downtown. Um, and my primary reason for wanting to speak up is to say thank you for including in the budget a provision for something that um, really is a human service. It's it's a kindness to people to offer an opportunity and, and really a responsibility that we as a community have to offer people a place to be. And I think a sanctioned campground is a really brilliant solution an elegant solution to a lot of potential problems. And we've learned over the last couple of years, and particularly with Second and Second Coalition, that it's very effective um, to connect with people and to give them a safe place to be, to take a load off and take the pressure off of survival and start focusing their attention on thriving. I think sanctioned campgrounds will absolutely give an opportunity for people who are underserved to take a little break from constant roundups, the constant pushing, um, and take advantage of a little bit of a break. I think there are a lot of organizations in this community that have a great opportunity to contribute, but I would absolutely advocate that Unsheltered Utah um, and or other organizations involved with the Second and Second Coalition have um, some really good information and really good experience. And Next will be Kem Albrader, followed by Allison Albrader, and then Charlotte Brimhall. Kem's here in person. Uh, topics here, um, but uh, the, if you uh, could, the, excuse me, to, sir. To yeah, sorry, Great. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. I just, if you could move the mic a little closer to you, please. Thank you. Is that better? Okay. Yes, Apologies for great. that. Go ahead. So. Uh, I'm here to talk about some traffic calming measures that are proposed for our neighborhood. Um, uh, the website that details these these uh, existing measures um, states that in late 2022, residents from the neighborhood near 1300 South and 2100 East intersection expressed growing concern about the safety along these corridors. 
Responding to these con uh, concerns, the community requested additional traffic calming measures to reduce speed in the area. Uh, the design, which incorporates well-spaced and semi-frequent speed humps, was approved, and the project scheduled to begin construction in July of 2023. Um, I want to say thank you for these these efforts. Um, unfortunately, there's a petition that's recently been launched against these uh, this project. The petition might lead some to believe that there's not substantial support. Uh, for these measures. However, the reality is that the support's overwhelming in our neighborhood. Um, the voices against are loud, but they do not represent the majority. Uh, uh, they do not represent the residents uh, who fear for the safety every time they step out into the streets, their parents sending their children to school, uh, for those who want to live in a neighborhood meant for people, not cars. The petition raises uh, several concerns, including potential negative impacts. Uh, their points are presented without evidence or reference, raising concerns about their credibility. Evidence from uh, other countries that have already implemented widespread traffic calming measures conclude that these impacts and concerns are minimal or non-existent. Our streets are not just for vehicles. They're shared spaces used by pedestrians, cyclists, children's playing, children playing, and neighbors interacting. We need to ensure that these spaces are safe for all users, not just those behind the wheel. Delaying this project could lead to additional preventable accidents. The tragic accident involving a little girl walking home less than a year ago haunts our community. And now uh, my own family has uh, ha had uh, a similar experience uh, of these dangers in these, on these roads. Let's not wait for another tragedy to spur us into action. I urge the council Hi. to continue with the pro, pro, approved project. Thank you. Next will be Allison Elbrader, followed by Charlotte Brimhall, and then Jeanette Padilla. Allison is here in person. I want to address the planning, the planned traffic calming measures in District 6 along 1300 South, including speed bumps and a raised crosswalk. I'm here as an advocate for traffic calming across the whole city and a concerned parent who wishes to see a safer environment for our children and our community. Recently, a terrifying incident brought this issue closer to my heart. My family, my husband, my three-year-old son, and my three-month-old daughter were sideswiped while walking home from the grocery store at the corner of 13th South and 17th East. The van was moving too fast, barely stopping and charging into the intersection, oblivious to us entering the crosswalk. While our encounter ended in a dented stroller and a minor scratch, we were only inches from a disaster. We were fortunate. Others in our neighborhood were not so lucky. This issue isn't just about numbers or theoretical scenarios. This is real life. This accident-prone street runs through a neighborhood bustling with children near, near two elementary schools, a popular park, and local businesses. Pedestrians and cyclists, including children, navigate these roads daily. Crossing 1300 South is not it cannot be avoided, nor should it be. We travel to see our friends, attend school, and run daily errands. We should strive for a more walkable, connected community, not divided by aggressive traffic. If all of us obeyed every traffic law all the time, there would be almost no crashes. But we are human, and our system that is safe only if people don't make mistakes is not a system that is made for humans. Infrastructure improvements that calm traffic are the only way to create a system that is truly made for humans. This project is a step closer to a community designed for people. It recognizes that reducing the speed alone is not enough. Introducing speed humps is a proactive approach that inherently calms traffic, creates a safer and more livable environment and everyone, for everyone, especially our children, and should be implemented here and all across Salt Lake City. Thank you. Next will be Charlotte Brimhall, followed by Jeanette Padilla, and then Dave John. Charlotte is here in person. Thank you. Um, so I would actually like everybody that is currently unhoused to raise their hands. And I counted how many people are in this room. We've got 30 people and this many people that are currently unhoused. They're here. Um, to hear this discussion and I would like to thank them for taking the trip on our way here We actually gave some people rides and we saw rows and rows of tents along the streets on every corner um, I'd like to also point out I'm actually not a resident of Salt Lake City because I can't afford it myself I have a house out in Sandy That costs just as much as the sanctioned campground that you guys have carved out which is awesome um I would like to also say that 
we have a friend, I have a friend that I just last night helped find a safe place to sleep for the night because he is no longer welcome at any of the shelters that are here in Salt Lake County. So he had to go and sleep in Liberty Park on a mat because he's not allowed to erect a tent. So I think that in, in um, working closely with the Nomad Alliance with our unhoused population, I've witnessed that they are self-policing they're very collaborative. Um, they come up with solutions when they have nothing. And I think it would be great to um, allow this opportunity for them to really have some stability and dignity of life. Thank you. Next is Jeanette Padilla, followed by Dave John, and then Miranda Twitterl. Jeanette is here in person. Hi, can everyone hear me OK? I want to echo the sentiments of so many that have spoken before me and just say thank you to our council and very specifically to Councilwoman Petro and to um, Alejandro. Um, I know how hard you have worked to make something like this happen and I know how difficult it is for representatives like yourself to take such a big leap even though it's um, in the grand scheme of things it's a small step. It's, it, it's a huge deal. There is so much conversation um, around this. It's a very charged subject, understandably so. And I'm so thankful that we have a council that is willing to be innovative and take chances and say, we don't have all the answers, but we're willing to collaborate and figure this out. I'm thankful for your constant communication with people like myself who are out in the street on a weekly basis, multiple times a week, speaking to our unsheltered neighbors and learning from them and seeing what is really happening and what is really needed. Um, I'm you know, thankful for people like Wendy, um, Dave, who's also here. I've worked alongside them many times to help um, at Second and Second Coalition, which was run really well, in my opinion. It was um, safe, it was dignified, and it was very, very necessary. Um, I could go on for hours sharing the experiences <laughs> that um, we've seen in the street helping um, some people experiencing homelessness and how devastating those um, situations have been. And um, I, I just can't um, thank you enough for setting aside some money to, to try to figure out some, some temporary solutions as a stepping stone to um, a continuum of care. So um, once again, just thank you. Next will be Dave John, followed by Miranda Twitterl, and then Johnny. Dave is here in person. Uh, hello, my name is Dave John. I'm a founder of uh, ours, which is uh, our and Shelter Relatives. Also, I'm part of the Second and Second Coalition, uh, which we partner up with the First United Methodist Church. And also, I just got on the peanut board. So, yeah ready to do some damage there. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, thank you to the council for getting this first step going because we've been asking for this for over what, well, when I got into helping the unsheltered, it's been over three years now. And my group, we feed, uh, usually we set up every Saturday and cook a, like a home cooked meal uh, rain, sleet, or snow. Uh, so we gave the post office competition also. Um, but yeah, it's good that uh, this is a first step, you know, with the sanctioned camp. I remember we were always yelling, you know, give us a place. And then when we got the First United Methodist Church, yeah, then we found all these bugs we had to work out. And it was nice that as we opened up every time, and I think we opened up, what, 44 times? 35. 35. Yeah, and the sad thing about that, too, the last night we were open, we were at capacity, which was 85 people, but we also had to turn away 55 people that night. So it's good that we got this ancient camp because we know just that extra security they have, you know, where they can leave their their home and go to work and not worry about, you know, if they're come back if their stuff's going to be there. So we noticed that also helps them out and concentrate more on their job. And again, thank you for taking the first step on this. 
Next will be Miranda Twirl, followed by Joni and then Ksenia Kamasiba. Miranda's here in person. It's Miranda Twitchell, just so everybody knows. I am unsheltered. Um, I have been unsheltered since COVID hit and took everything I owned down to the clothes of my back with me, my son, and my daughter-in-law. Since in the last two years, you guys have taken my stuff 28 times down to the clothes on my back. I came home in a blizzard and there's nothing. I'm home from work, I'm freezing cold, there's no blanket, no tarp, no nothing, everything gone. Now I have to go to work in the next morning, but how? I don't have anywhere to sleep, I have nowhere to stay warm, I have no clothes to wear, so I can't have my job. I had a job that I was supposed to start two weeks ago, can't do it because I got baited on Friday, got baited on Thursday, and I'm being baited again on this Friday. We just want a place to call ours, where I can put my stuff, I can go to work, and I can go do the things I need to do, because I can't go to housing meetings, I can't go see a case manager, I can't go do food stamps, because I have to watch my stuff to make sure I have something to come home to. My son had a, 20, had a central line with a 24-hour bank of medicine dip. He got cut from here to here and had a wound back. And he sat on the side of Maverick for three weeks before he went back to the emergency room. And they rushed doing his wound, back, his, um, his skin graft, because there was nowhere safe for him to be. My son was, he had to charge the, he had to charge the, the uh, IV drip and he had to charge the wound back. Nowhere to do it. We just want a place. We are human. We are matter. And we're... If you give us a way to get out of this situation, we'll get out of this situation. But you guys keep on taking everything we own, so constantly rebuilding, so we can't get up out of the situation. The trauma of losing everything you own down to the clothes on your back sends us to mental health issues, sends us where we can't even associate with people. You stay in your tent because it's, that's all you have. I mean, it's just, it's really important that we just have a safe place because if we have a bathroom, we'll use the restrooms. We're not gonna, if you, you know, we're not gonna go on the walls if we have somewhere to go. If we have somewhere to shower, we're gonna shower. I wanna go back to work. I need to know that I can have somewhere safe where I'm gonna come home and have something. I don't go to the shelters because the shelters were supposed to keep my stuff for 30 days if I get exited, they threw my stuff away. Multiple times, my work tools, my clothing, everything. I don't go to the shelters because they steal my stuff. I just wanna have a space of my own where I can put my stuff and I know when I come home, it's gonna be there because that is my home. It may be a tent, but that's my home. That's where I live, that's where my son lives, that's where my daughter-in-law lives. And we deserve to have a place to call ours. Next is Joni, followed by Ksenia Kanasiva, and then Destiny Newland. Joni's here in person. My name is Johnny, not Joni. Um, I've been homeless for quite some time. I helped organize uh, a sanctioned ha campground called Last Hope. Um, we had everything. We had a porta potty. We had we had a way to shower. We had a way to keep people out. Um, shelters, they steal my belongings. The city has taken my belongings like countless, countless times. Again, like Miranda said, I would really like a place that I feel safe at. Um, now I don't because it's it's still up in the air where I know the abating is coming. Um, where we're at right now, I'm in front of the Wasatch Garden. Um, that's a place to call home. They wanted us there. So, but I know because the field is uh, covered now, we're going to get abated. I know we are. Um, I just want a place that I can kick back, take it easy, not worry about my home being destroyed or broken into and stolen. It, it's it's frustrating. It's frustrating for us to try to get a job. We can't because we can't leave our tent. Um, it, it's virtually impossible unless we have a sanctioned campground to a place to call home. Um, Nomad Alliance has helped us tremendously. Um, the winter was really hard. Um, every winter is hard, but this past winter was even harder. Um, I don't think without Nomad Alliance, without Dave, our cook, <laughs> um, we wouldn't be making it. He brings by our hand sanitizer so we can stay warm. Um, unless you're living in our shoes, you really don't know what it's like to, to be homeless and not have anything. Um, it's bad enough. At, yes, okay, time. Thank you. Next will be Ksenia Konosiva, followed by Destiny Newland, and then Gucci Stacks. Ksenia is here in person.
Gosh, I love you guys today. Thank you so much. You've heard me incessantly begging, begging on behalf of all these people desperate for a place to call home, a safe place to be. Thank you so, so very much. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Thank you for working so hard to make this happen. And I promise all these organizations that work so hard to be with the people will do everything, everything to make sure that this doesn't blow up in your face, that your risk will be met with intense hard work and rules and regulations and really long chats about what it means to be better, right guys? You promise? Yeah, we love you and this is a big thing. <laughs> so. Um, I just want to say that uh, this, again, Cassinia with the Nomad Alliance, and um, we have a plan. And we've been talking about this for years and years before it was even a viable option. And we'll work with you to assuage all your concerns and make sure it's safe and stable and that time in a camp is brief and people are moved into housing. Because I can tell you it is so hard for us to find the people we're serving. And we waste time that could be better spent getting people than resources that they really need. And um, I want to say thank you, every one of you guys that said yes to coming today, even though it was last minute. I love you. I'm so proud of you it's scary but thank you thank you for for believing in yourselves and in your community and I know that we we can do this um, we I also want to thank um, Wendy and Unsheltered Utah and Dave um, we were there together for their first four inaugural movie night um, days before it was made permanent and um, you know, we, we, we left because we wanted to really focus on sanctioned campgrounds and we really wanted to focus on long-term solutions because the overnight system doesn't work. It's, it does not promote the stability that allows you to, to keep a job when you Hi. can't have your stuff. But thank you so much. Appreciate it. Next is Destiny Newland, followed by Gucci Stacks and then Sarah Graham. Destiny is here in person. Okay, hi, my name is Destiny. Um, this is my dog, Kai. Uh, we are unsheltered. We, um, we live on the streets of Salt Lake City. And when I first came here about two years ago, and I wasn't expecting to be unsheltered, but here I am, um, I wasn't uh, really prepared for like the abatements and stuff. Like in Oregon, like the cops have to have a warrant to go into your tent. Here they just, they pick up your whole tent and they just throw the whole thing in the garbage. I was horrified. I just could not believe that that happened. I mean, I just, I wasn't, um, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> um, and um, I, I'm, I've, I've lived in Alaska and a lot of other cold places and I've never personally known um, anyone to have, like frostbite so bad they had to have body parts amputated. Um, this winter was like the winter from hell that would not end. Um, I personally have had friends that have froze to death this winter. Um, actually just like a couple blocks from me and um, I feel like I'll never be able to like forgive myself for letting that happen. Um, um, I, I feel like this, uh, this sanctioned um, campground would really um, allow us to like take care of each other, you know, because on the streets you see the whole spectrum of human capacity. Like you see true malevolence, you know, like someone will have like a seizure or some medical episode and then like, you see people like instantly start going through their pockets and stuff and it's just, it's crazy. But then you really see like community and sacrifice and and just everything that you would want to see from from people too. Um, there There are real, real angels on the streets too. It's not just, degenerates, you know, I mean, I, I feel like the numbers, I'm not sure um, specifically, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure that um, the majority of Americans are just like a couple paychecks away from homelessness. I mean, it's not just Hi. drug addicts. Um, okay, thank you guys. Next is Gucci Stacks, followed by Sarah Graham, and then Jennifer Cadaban. Gucci is here in person. So I'd like to thank you guys for making that big step towards like getting a camp where people can actually have their stuff. I feel like they can hear me though. <laughs> I feel like they can hear me. <laughs> really? Oh, okay, yeah. Should I come here in person though? Huh? Um, yeah, thank you guys. Um, 
kind of low key. But we're gonna definitely work with you guys on whatever you guys. And uh, we're gonna definitely work with you. I hear myself though. We're gonna work with you guys on envision your vision of this camp and yes, everything everyone else had. I guess whatever. Y'all stole my idea though. I, had that idea. I just barely said today. Let's go to the mountains and let's build it. I started recruiting people for that today. I I want to help you guys build that vision though. So I'm glad to know you guys are already working on that. We're on the same page, and I want to help you build your vision. So thank you guys for the opportunity to show that people cannot be savages if they have a little camp in privacy and yeah i don't know what else to say except for the abatements gotta stop there. that's just a huge ass waste of time and money the abatements have got to stop that's a huge ass waste of time and money on oh, god i have wasted so much money on just buying shit over and over again and like so many people wanted to come today and like express their opinions but they can't because they're worried about police coming in and throwing away their shit it's ridiculous but thank you for now correcting that mistake where there's going to be a, a place where people can go instead of just being on the side of the road for some reason. Like, it's just weird that police be doing that. Like, we're out there in the middle of nowhere by the Jordan River and stuff. We're not bothering nobody. Why are they abating people? I don't know. But I would like a place that I could go, you know, after this and just build my life. <laughs> Uh, I know you can hear me, dog. You got a black voice. Come on, let's be honest. Okay, but yeah. I would like a place I can go so I don't have to worry about restarting my life and police throwing away my shit. Y'all on that? I feel like yeah. Fine. Okay, thank you. Next is Jennifer Catbagen, followed by James Faircloth, and then AJ Lone Wolf. Jennifer is here in person. Jennifer? Okay, no problem. Okay, who is our next commenter, Taylor? Next will be James Faircloth, followed by AJ Lone Wolf, and then Brad Saline. James is here in person. I think this can be said in two minutes for sure. Ksenia is probably the number one vote by me as far as a lead in helping planning this setup. I have many ideas based upon restorative justice. Um, I, being an ex-convict, after many, many years of being around that, I understand a lot about social behaviors, finding out even new ways to curse at people. Um, I can help put together a plan, and I would like to do that. Uh, I'm a certified firefighter, son of a Navy SEAL, and second cousin to the wife of Gen General Douglas MacArthur. So. I mean to serve this community as any, anywhere, to be just as important here. Colorado is, if you look at Arvada, and they're based on what they want to do with the tent city, as well as Denver, it could give you an idea of some of the ways that some things could work in a very budgeted manner. Um, also, having the ability to talk to people about tax credits beyond this grant could also help get tough sheds and stuff put out and then equip them in a way that would be warm for people in the winter because your winters out here are really bitter. So with that said, uh, I'll try to work with uh, Cassini a lot closer and put together a prospectus on how what our ideas are if you guys are welcome that. All right, thanks. 
Next is AJ Lone Wolf, followed by Brad Celine, and then Rosalind Ellis. AJ is here in person. All right, how y'all doing? Uh, I'm AJ. She working? All right. But anyway, um, I've been homeless probably for most of my life, I guess. I mean, it depends on what you call homeless. Just because I don't own a home or I don't live in an apartment, you know. I mean, what what we what everybody out there is telling me and what I'm hearing is all we want is a place to call a home. You know, some place, some piece of ground where the police is not chasing us off every morning and every 20 minutes, we can't have a tent here, you can live there. And that's, that's basically what everybody wants. Just a piece of ground where we can take care of it and manage it and possibly get a, a hand up, you know, get, get something going that's a little better than what we're doing now. And with the way things are going out there right now, it's not working. It's not. Because you got all these companies and everything chasing us around, pushing us, all the homeless everywhere, and that ain't solving nothing. All that's doing is causing confusion and more problems. And everybody just wants the same thing, is just to be left alone and have a place to live and, you know, hopefully get a job, do something better. And that's basically when everybody's minds out there. Because, you know, they're tired of being chased around all over the city, can't live here, can't stay there. And there's got to be some solution that's simpler than what you guys, what's happening now. Because it's just, you know, not getting nothing. It's just, you know, chasing the issue around is all it's doing. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people out there would work and, you know, stuff like this if they had a place where they could, you know, just sit down and not worry about having their stuff stolen or being chased out or, you know, having the cops come along and take your belongings and throw them away. That just happened to me last week, by the way. Time. So, it's got to be something done because it's not, it's getting worse. Thank you. Next is Brad Celine, followed by Rosalind Ellis. Brad is here in person. Thank you. Brad, just before you start, the reason why we're so serious about the microphones is because even if I can hear you, um, if people are hearing impaired, they can't hear you. The recording's not picking it up, and people that are listening and joining virtually can't hear you. So just make sure that you, you know, are speaking right into that microphone. No worries with me. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. I could tell, but I just wanted to, you know, make sure other people knew. <laughs> My name is Brad Celine, and I'm on the board of Nomad Alliance. I've been working with them for about a year and a half, so I've watched a lot of growth. Uh, when I first got involved, I was just, you know, volunteer, uh, working with the clothing section of our our food drives, our supply drives. Um, since then, I joined the board, and you know, we've become much more organized. Um, and we moved our uh, donation center to half a block away from the Greyhound uh, Center. Um, we've moved from going campground to campground, which we were doing in the beginning, to where now we're just doing one centralized campground because we have a following. We have a following of the homeless people that expect our support, that come there for it. We're providing more than just food and clothing. We're helping to sponge records. We're providing uh, haircuts. We're doing anything we can to give them back the sense of uh, humanity. And what, we've, what I've watched personally them when they see that people care and and and, and they, they gain hope to get out of their situation and, and hope brings ambition and and we beyond supply drives we've we've worked individually with people to help them recover to help them get back into jobs so we've seen a struggle and, and we understand very clearly you know what it takes to be able to implement you know what your goal is to get a sanctioned campground and and what that would consist of and we need you know showers 
just like if you went camping and went to a campground, you know, there's basic necessities there, you know, just shower so they can get cleaned up, so they can go to work. You have to be able to be clean to have a job. You got to be able to leave your stuff. So you need a, you need a warehouse to have, for them to check in their possessions. It's not just enough to be in a camp, campground and, and have your tent not abated. It's you, to leave your personal prized possessions in a, in a secure location. So to be able to check them in, go to work, come back, know they're going to be there and check them back out. So the, what I've seen, which I was really amazed by when I first started working with them on the streets, is the, this is a community. These people have a community. They don't want to go into uh, 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 centers. So uh, this, will, this is what will this accomplish, is giving them that step out. Thank you. Next is Rosalind Ellis, who is here in person. Um, I'm actually going to address something a little different as, as for the ho homeless. I'm not homeless. However, that's my daughter who was homeless. And I'm going to tell you, taking her clothes down by the river, wondering if she was going to be alive the next day was horrible. It was devastating. I tried to take her to the shelter. I couldn't leave her there. If you think that is a livable situation, take one of your children there. Drop them off. That's all I got to say. You will not do it. It's horrible. I feel like if they could come together and have some kind of hope and community, which they have amongst themselves, and thank you, Nomad, for keeping my daughter alive. She's hopefully going to conquer this, but the last five years of watching my daughter live through these cities is horrible. I don't live in, in Salt Lake. I live in North Salt Lake because I can't do it. I don't see a homeless person. I see somebody's kid. I see somebody's mom. Like, I get it, you guys. I 500,000? Yes. What a great start, but it should be millions. I just heard millions going on. I'm a plumber, and I, we build millions of dollars of worth, like a lot of buildings that go millions of dollars in just plumbing in there so that they can have plumbing. These people don't have plumbing. 500,000, I really think that I hope that you guys give some, some city space and make this happen for these people because if any of your children ever become homeless, I hope to God they don't. But I'm going to tell you, it's the scariest thing. I never knew she was going to be alive the next day. Do you know how many tents I bought her? I couldn't count because they just kept taking them from her. She couldn't ever get a job because she never had a safe place to leave her stuff, which then kicked in her mental illness, which was horrible to watch. I just, I, I hope and pray that you guys can really dig a little deeper. 500,000 is a drop in the bucket. It really needs to be canceled. It needs to be taken care of. Give them a space. Give them something. Give them hope. Give us parents hope. <laughs> Don't make us watch our children die on your streets. Please. And that was the final registered commenter. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, yes, Councilmember Pui. Sorry, may, may I uh, request a personal, uh, a moment of personal privilege? Yes. Uh, so I, you know, I would like to say something uh, regarding, uh, you know, the the motion to the uh, sanction camping catalytic grant fund. Um, this council voted unanim unanimously to allocate five hundred thousand dollars for sanction camping on RB parking uh, and put it on a holding account. Uh, pending more discussion with the administration to figure out details to make this happen. I been I visited um, uh, campground uh, in Seattle uh, in 2021. I visited uh, two in Seattle uh, about 10 times in Denver. Uh, the sanction camping. I visited the uh, uh, shelter and campground in Dallas. Um, I know that we can figure this out, uh, and it might seem not like a lot of money, but this is a monumental change uh, to find a solution. Um, and I know that there is a lot of questions to be answered. I have so many questions to be answered myself, but I want us, I want to thank everybody, um, those that visited with me, the campgrounds, those, those that um, that put the time to try to understand how to do this without without leaving the state and the county and all of those and the federal government off the hook um, because they are also responsible for this as well um, and 
we have many needs in our city, in this city, but um, I believe that we can find a solution or something to mitigate the pain and the suffering, a safe place, a dignified place for those that are living in the streets. So uh, I want to thank all of you um, for, for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Pui. Um, I would like to give myself a moment of personal privilege <laughs> and say, you know, we had a lot of people come up, well, not a lot, we had several people come up and, today and speak um, and say that they don't live in Salt Lake City, but they're, they're trying to help us with this solution. I really appreciate you coming. You're always welcome to come here and make those comments, um, whether you're a Salt Lake City resident or not. The one thing I would ask is that you also go to your city councils and, and encourage them to help us in this effort and to help divert resources because even though we have a lot of, of, um, of um, people that are living unsheltered in Salt Lake City, that this is a, a problem that is bigger than our city and we really need the help of other jurisdictions. And so I hope that you'll encourage them to send support um, or to do uh, to do something in your own in their those communities as well. Thank you. Chair, sure. yes, I also may have a moment of privilege. Yes. I just wanted to also recognize the work that Casinia and Wendy and the other groups have been doing. I remember meeting Casinia a few years ago. We sat down at People's Coffee, and she was saying. It's a lot of work, and where do I start? Can can you do something, or what? What is it? And I said, Kisinia, this is a tough job that you're going to embark on, but I'm confident that if you organize, start the nonprofit, show that you know it can be done. I think once um, other people start seeing that, we'll be able to support like support the work, and 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 you've demonstrated that, and so and when the too. I know when you were working so hard on the other one, so I appreciate that work because the the tide is shifting. Is that the word? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How you say the tide is shifting? And like council member, um, they have said, you know, um, I was very hesitant at the beginning to do this, but something needs to be done. And I went and checked it myself, and I know what we could do versus what we have right now, and what we have right now, unacceptable. So I am confident that we can all work together to have a dignified place, a safe place, a clean place, a place where people can relax for a little bit, um, get you know that hope back and that ambition back. And then once you're out of there, you help the next person, and so on and so on and so on. So I'm super excited about this and see where it goes, and I appreciate all the work and the help and the example, so thank you. Mr. Chair, I just want to say thank you for all coming and sharing your stories with us. It's brave and it makes a big difference. Thank you. Okay. We are at, um, that's still the last comment, right, Taylor? <laughs> yes, that was the last registered commenter. Okay, great. Um, thank you, everyone who commented. Um, this brings us to. Um, section J, new business. We have no new business on tonight's agenda. Um, section K is unfinished business. We have item K1, which is a resolution regarding a general obligation bond for parks, trails, and open, open space series 2023. Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt the resolution authorizing up to $25.5 million of the city's federally taxable general obligation bonds for parks, trails, and open space. Second. The motion from Council Member Dugan and a second from Council Member Pui. Okay. Um, any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we will go ahead and vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, that passes unanimously. Uh, that brings us to item K2 which is an ordinance regarding the Economic Development Loan Fund for Salt Lake Sandwich Company. Mr. Chair, I move that the council adopt the ordinance approving $100,000 loan for Salt Lake Sandwich Company, LLC, for the economic development, from the Economic Development Loan Fund. Second. 
I have a motion from Councilmember Pui, a second from Councilmember Dugan. Any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move to a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. All right, that passes unanimously. Um, we are at the final item of our agenda, which is the consent agenda. I'll look for Mr. a motion. Mr. Chair? Yes. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Um, I, nice, that was well done. Um, thank you, I have a motion from Council Member Fowler, um, just perfectly stated, and a second from Council Member Pui, which was also very good. Um, <laughs> any discussion to this? All right, um, we'll go ahead and vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, Aye. say nay. All right, that, that passes um, with an extra salute from Council Member Fowler uh, unanimously. Um, and that is the last item on our agenda. We will stand adjourned. Thank you. All right, bye, Amy.